The big story of the day, of course, is that political reshuffle going on, still going on. Uh, but from what you have seen, uh, starting with you, Isabella, um, net, are we longer or shorter environmental champions in, in the senior ranks of government? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I must say, I think actually we've seen a very positive shift with Michael Gove going into sort of deal with the housing department. It's a very big challenge for the government right now, especially this, this autumn, we had been waiting for the heat and building strategy for a very long time. And I think that Michael is the perfect person, having seen what he did when he was environment secretary to be able to actually champion such a tough issue, but also make sure that there's a strong environmental aspect throughout that. OK, so thumbs up there from Isabella for Michael Gove to housing. What would you say, Dame Julia? Um, well, I, Michael Gove uh, would, would have been the one person I would have highlighted as being uh, hopefully a positive. Uh, the heat and building strategy, of course, is a, is a Bayes strategy, although one would hope that uh, MHCLG will have a, a big input to it. Um, one of the things Michael Gove has on his desk is, of course, the new planning bill. Um, that will be absolutely crucial. And uh, the, the version of it that we were going to see really didn't take environment and sustainability into account seriously. So I think we can really hope that Michael Gove and his team will get behind that and, and make sure that the new arrangements for planning in the UK really do deliver low carbon and resilient um, towns, cities and infrastructure. So a lot of both of your hopes riding on Michael Gove there. No pressure there, Mr Gove. Uh, what about Treasury, Isabella? Because we haven't seen any changes there yet. And of course, Treasury hold the purse strings, don't they? So key to getting the money to these climate goals. Yes, exactly. We've seen Steve Barclay has been moved into the Cabinet Office and he was really in charge of the spending review briefings. So the entire environment sector has spent the last few months writing all of their submissions for the spending review and for the budget, hoping to get what they want in terms of financing for new environmental and climate schemes. So let's hope who, wherever replaces him um, this week has got a strong environmental agenda as we really need to see some significant spending now in the um, spending review. But also we are waiting for the net zero review, um, which is due out of the treasury imminently. And that's going to really be a bellwether for us in terms of how much responsibility and ambition the UK government wishes to set ahead of COP. You've both mentioned um, the heat and building strategy. We're still waiting for it. It's been long promised, hasn't it? Um, something else I want to ask you about is actually a policy that was put into place, um, and that was the Green Homes, homes Grant. Um, there's another scheme uh, that I was mentioning there that was actually put into place. A lot of criticism it attracted. Uh, would you say, Dame Julia, the Green Homes Grant, was it a waste of money? Uh no, but I think it was right to to um, to stop the part of it that the government did quickly, but they obviously hadn't got um, well enough prepared for, which was the the, the grants to people to individuals um, wanting to install low carbon heating and and more insulation. But uh, but I think what's been really really disappointing is how long, well, the fact that we still don't have a replacement for it. We still do have the local authority part of it going on, um, which is supporting uh, local authority homes and some um, uh, uh, other community kind of projects. Uh, that, I think, is being very successful. We don't hear very much about that. That needs more, more funding going into it. But we do need a replacement for the, uh, the grant to um, support householders, because we do need to really tackle the emissions from buildings. Emissions from buildings in the UK are something like 25% of our, our CO2 emissions. They really aren't coming down fast enough for us to meet our net zero target. So this is an absolute priority for the government. Uh, and we, you know, people need help and they need to understand 
what they can do. And of course, at the moment, replacing your boiler is a distressed purchase. If your boiler goes, um, then you desperately need something, particularly if winter's coming on. So, you know, people need to be able to plan. And we don't know what support there's going to be at the moment. Yeah, and time is ticking, isn't it, Isabella? 47 days till COP26. So what would you say the government absolutely must prioritise to credibly host that climate conference in Glasgow? Yes, as you say, only 47 days, and yet we are very um, far off meeting our, our net zero targets. However, if the government committed to the housing and transport policies that they have put out for consultation right now, we would be a third of the way to where we need to be by 2032, which is a significant amount. Um, and I think in terms of the massive delay, it has been hugely disappointing. And I think it's made the environment sector feel a little bit nervous. But of course, you have to think of Alak Sharma, who's the president of this summit, who's been flying around the world, negotiating with very big, significant nations, trying to ensure that they will support us in this ambitious summit okay. and yet we don't have anything yet to say in terms of what we are going to do at home yet but so we, those, hope we need to get all of those departments to be working better together in in short order